Welcome to a new episode of Major Mechanics Metal Detecting. This video consists out of three trips, two made to the same spot and one at a local spot here. I was finally able to go out with my mate Wardigger again and lo and behold he managed to do the thing he always does. Stun me to my very core with his beautiful finds. I hope you enjoy. Oh, welcome to a new episode of Major Conix Metal Detecting. Today I am finally together with Mr. Wardigger again. It's been way too long but yeah, we're out man. We're out in the war forest. And uh, yeah, his first find for today. <laughs> Look at this guys. Dutch um, bicycle tax plate. 1940-1941. I will mirror the image probably. I don't know for sure. Because this one is mirrored. The other side is pretty bad. So that's why we have it on this side. And then go over. This is what it's supposed to look like. Only the middle part is different. 1941-1940. Woohoo! What a beautiful find to start off the day. Congratulations. Bunk. For this particular plate we actually heated it up off camera so that we could show it to you on camera. The plate was folded thus we couldn't show anything. It leaves a stripe in the middle but at least we were able to show you. This impractical bicycle tax was in effect between 1924 and 1941. Bike owners had to pay three Dutch guilders per year at the post office. In return they received a copper plate imprinted with the current tax year to be affixed to the bike and replaced annually. Immediately after the tax was introduced, thieves started to pry the plates from bikes and counterfeiters produced fakes, all to be sold on the black market. At the same time, Eagle-eyed police officers were needed to enforce the tax. They were posted at busy cycling junctions during rush hour and faced an impossible task. Those who didn't cough up the required fee could simply escape from the police checks by walking the bike, telling the officials to be on his or her way to the post office to pay the tax. The whole thing was just a farce. When the highly effectively organized Nazi powers took charge of the lowlands during World War II, one of the first things they abandoned was this much hated bike tax. All right guys, I think you know the reason why it took so long to go with Mr. Wadiga. <laughs> he always finds the fucking beautiful stuff. And we cleaned it, yes we cleaned it, but he just found this between the rocks. No freaking way dude, no freaking way. Look at that, that is a Luftwaffe. Bell buckle, 19, uh, 1939, make his mark, everything. What? <laughs> it's aluminum, that's why it's in such a good shape. But that is a gorgeous, gorgeous relic. It will clean up very nicely. My God! Why, how even, what? <laughs> This beautiful aluminium early Luftwaffe belt buckle by Hermann Auring from 1939 must be the best find this year. What a gorgeous, gorgeous relic and of course by Mr. Wardiger. Many, many thanks for this experience. I loved it. Today we are back in the woods together with Wardiger and together with Mr. Another guy collecting junk. And uh, yeah, first finds of today are in. Beautiful German flare casing and the text is still on there for sure. Maybe we can get it clean and show you, maybe not, but at least it's one. And uh, yeah, this, uh, oh, what's it called? Pick a wheel. <laughs> I have no idea. X, trench X, whatever. Trench pick. So that's cool. So there's loads and loads and loads and loads of uh, trenches here in the wood. You can see going down. So yeah, let's hope we can find something amazing again. Yes, guys, and a very nice signal here. And uh, hoo -hoo, I think that's a field bottle. I think that might be my first genuine one. Ah, what the hell? Is this an American one? I don't know. Oh, that must be a field bottle for sure. Wow, right here in the bottom says something. 
I have no idea. I've never seen this model, to be honest. That is cool. Ah, I will research it. It's not a, a not a normal German field model. It's not a normal American one. So hope it's not post-war, but uh, yeah, that looks definitely cool. Nice. Yeah, we got something strange out of the ground. We're in this trench here. There's a trench and I had a dump pit here. Loads of glass, a bit of porcelain. Uh, yeah, but it's strange. It looks like part of it is war, part of it might not be. So you can see Nescafe jar, uh, Signal toothpaste, uh, some porcelain from Bavaria. And we're not near Bavaria. And uh, yeah, this Opecta bottle which was uh, yeah, the father of Anne Frank. Here at the bottom you see 44, and I don't know if that's the date. I have no idea to be honest, but could be. Could be definitely. So I don't know, I'll take that one with me. Yeah, it's a lot of trash, but uh, I don't know. Might be something cool. Uh, and I forgot to film here. This one also came out. It's a Maggi bottle, German number six. And you know the reason why we think this is war uh, because this quantity is not normal for like having on table in a civilian house so this must be from a mess tin, uh, mess mess hall yeah so it could be war germans do love their maggie but there's nothing here there's no houses no nothing and it's a trench some foxholes some positions, so yeah, I don't know, but it's a cool bottle. Welcome to the last part of this video. Uh, today I got an extremely cool tip from one of my uh, uh, associates, uh, non digger. So he told me that at this particular forest, uh, the Americans buried an entire uh, watchtower from the Germans in 1944 when uh, this part was liberated and yeah they shoveled everything just with a big shovel they shoveled everything in a hole so i looked in the forest for a hole i found it and it was all kinds of trash every freaking where and uh yeah modern trash old trash uh, i immediately recognized some stuff from from older times not yet particularly war related but uh yeah as you can see, I'm sitting in a hole digging, and uh, yeah, that's what came out as far as this place goes. And uh, yeah, some of it is modern for sure. I think the villagers here used to uh, use this dump hole just as a trash site. Also, had some really nice parts, which I could probably tell something at least. And here you have, for example. Sloan's liniment and this is actually from the 1920s so we're getting somewhere where we also have this English uh, written Dutch lemonade bottle which is pretty cool and uh, we have this Nivea bottle ultra oil it says but I can't find the date on it uh, here you can even see this is not mine it's just lying on the surface go away yeah, some bottles, some nice bottles, and some porcelain, and I think we have some with these stems on it. Societe Maastricht, so Dutch made, and the Germans used a lot of Dutch made stuff, but yeah, the villagers obviously as well. Look at this, here's also a faint stem, Societe Maastricht. Here's the stem. So I'm looking for different stems or something that really gives out a date. And uh, yeah, I think I will save it for the next video. I will, uh, and soon so don't think there will be coming anything else that was worth filming so i hope you like this bit as well and i hope you look out to the next video where we conquer this entire pit and it's huge and everywhere is trash also all trash so yeah let's see i think i will uh, get some friends of mine to help me <laughs> So that was it for this video, we had a great time detecting together and we succeeded in our mission to save some history yet again. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the show, you can always leave a comment. Bye bye!